Now that we have a definition of charge and current, we are ready for our first law in electrical and computer engineering. And the first law is, elect is Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. So before we start describing what Kirchhoff's current law is, we need uh, another definition. And the definition we need is node. A node is where uh, two or more circuit elements come together. So if we have um, uh, circuit elements, which we're going to define a, a large number of them in the coming uh, lectures, uh, where two or more of them are joined together is a node. So briefly, uh, Kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of the currents entering a node equals zero. The sum of the currents entering a node equals zero. And Kirchhoff's current law is really an electrical statement of the law of conservation of mass. Remember, current is a charge flow rate. So what we're doing in Kirchhoff's current law is we're accounting for the charge flow rate. Therefore, we're accounting for all of the charges and making sure that we haven't lost them, created or destroyed any of them. Kirchhoff's current law is the conservation of mass from an electrical point of view. So before we start doing some examples specifically of Kirchhoff's current law, let's jump into our analogy. Remember the analogy for charge is a water molecule. The analogy for current is a water flow rate or a fluid flow rate. So if we have an analogy version of KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, the hydraulic analogy of KCL would be the sum of the flow rates entering a pipe junction equals zero. So then the node is where two or more electrical elements come together. That would be tantamount to a pipe junction in a fluid system. So an example we have here is we have three pipes which come together and uh, the flow rate coming uh, down in this direction is three gallons per minute and we have a flow rate going in this direction which is four gallons per minute and the question is what is the flow rate in this pipe going to the left so if you want to you know uh, kind of put some concrete on this you know maybe this this represents the sewage pipes in your house and so the the upstairs toilet uh, is is producing a flow of three gallons per minute and the downstairs toilet is producing a flow of four gallons per minute and since this is sewage we get very very concerned with what is the flow rate in the pipes underneath the house flowing to the left in this case so let's apply our pipe junction analogy version of Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current law says the sum of the flow rates entering the junction equals zero. So we see we have three gallons per minute entering. The three gallons per minute is entering our pipe junction. So we are adding up all of the flow rates entering the pipe junction. So we get plus three gallons per minute. Here we have four gallons per minute, and that is entering the junction. So we will add a four gallons per minute. And then lastly, we're interested in the flow rate in this direction, and that's an unknown. We don't know what that is, and so that'll be plus, and we'll call it the unknown flow rate. And our analogy of Kirchhoff's current law says when we do the sum of all the flow rates entering the junction that must add up to zero. So we have plus three, plus four, plus the unknown, and that must equal to zero. And when we solve for this, we will see that the unknown flow rate is negative seven gallons per minute. Now this is completely intuitive to what we already know because if we know for a fact that we have three gallons per minute going this direction, we have four gallons per minute entering this way, then there had better be, unless we're going to lose our sewage into the house, there had better be seven gallons per minute going in this direction, flowing to the right. Well, we had we asked for the flow rate going to the left, where well, the flow rate to the left is simply going to be the negative of the flow rate to the right, and so the answer is indeed exactly as we predicted, seven gallon, negative seven gallons per minute flowing to the left. So with that we can move on to the real version of Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current law says the sum of the currents entering a node, the sum of the currents entering a node equals zero. So we have this example here. Here we have a pipe, uh, excuse me, a, an electrical node 
where two or more circuit elements come together. So here we have three wires. Those three wires are all coming together at this point right there. So this is the node. And so if we sum the currents entering the node, that must all add up to zero according to Kirchhoff's current law. So, and you see in this example, the currents are already uh, entering the node, already drawn as entering the node, so we are ready to go. So the current, which is entering the node in this direction, all right, we have three amperes, three coulombs per second entering the node there. The current entering the node in this direction is going to be another four amperes. And then the current entering in this direction is the unknown, but we know that it's called I. And so we end up with the equation 3 plus 4 plus I equals 0. That's the sum of the currents that are entering the node. So evaluating this expression, we can see that clearly that I is going to be equal to negative 7 amperes. And just like before, if we have three coulombs per second going this way, we have four coulombs per second going that way. Well, obviously it stands to reason if we're not going if we're going to account for all of the charges, we're not going to lose any of them, then we must have seven coulombs per second, seven amperes going off to the right. Well, of course, in this particular problem, we were asked to find the current which is going to the left, and the current I will be the negative of that, which leads us to the answer that we just found, and that is I is negative 7 amperes. So looking at Kirchhoff's current law uh, in a different way, we were it was stated to us that Kirchhoff's current law is the sum of the currents entering a node must equal to zero. So the case here on the left shows us that we have I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. This is the exact case we just worked. We all know, uh, which implies in, in the previous example that I3 is going to be equal to the negative of I1 plus I2. All right, so that's the exact version we just worked. Now, if we were to take the currents, remember cur all currents have two names. Uh, you can write it with the arrow pointing one direction, or you can do it again with the arrow pointing the opposite direction. So if we take these currents, I1, I2, and I3, and simply flip them the other direction, the current hasn't changed, but the value I1, I2, and I3 will now become different numbers. Um, more exactly, they become the negative of what they are, and then we can do KCL once again. And that is the example that we have in the middle case. Uh, the currents have changed directions. We'll call them IB, I, IA, IB, and IC. They're simply going to be negative I1, negative I2, and negative I3, respectively. And then we can rewrite Kirchhoff's current law again. In this case, we have the version of KCL which says the sum of the currents exiting a node must equal to zero. Now, if you were to look at these two versions of KCL, all we have done is in this case, the currents, if they're entering the node, the current entering the node is simply the negative of the current exiting the node. And so if we take all of these currents and move it to the other side of the equation, we get the sum of the currents exiting a node equals zero. So the only difference between the first two versions of KCL stated on the slide are really which side of the equal sign the currents have been put on. And so we end up in the second case of the relationship to some of the currents exiting the node, we have IA plus IB plus IC, those are all exiting the node, that equals to zero. If we're interested in finding what IC is, again, we'll get negative IA plus IB. And if you can see by looking at these two relationships, they really are the same thing except for the negative sign, and that's because we have flipped the arrow around. These are the same currents. They're just using the other name of those currents. And of course, the third way to write KCL would be to only take some of the currents that are entering the node and move it to the other side. And so we have the sum of the currents entering a node equals the sum of the currents exiting a node. So working this example one more time, we see the currents entering the node. The currents entering in the, the node are I, 
1 and I2, and so we have I1 plus I2 are the currents entering the node, and the current leaving the node is IC, and of course if I1 and I2 enter that node, then it must exit the node, otherwise we have created or destroyed those charges, and we have violated conservation of mass. So one more time, if you look at the this relationship, this relationship and this relationship from the three different variations of how you can say Kirchhoff's current law, you'll see those three relationships really predict the same result. So to conclude, we'll do one more, one, one concrete example. And here is an example that may come up where we have four different branches and we have three of the currents are given to us and the question in this problem is, what is the current I1 entering the node? And so, what I like to always compute my KCLs the same way, and the KCL is stated as the currents entering the node. Well, the 10 amp current is already entering the node for us. The 5 amp current is already entering the node for us. So now I'm looking, I need to find the current entering the node down this branch, and it was stated to us that the current leaving this branch is 3 amps, therefore this is going to be a minus 3 amperes. All right, so now I have all of the currents entering a node, so I can write KCL, and all of the currents entering a node will let me say, state that 10 plus 5 plus, and the current entering a node here, the current entering a node here is a minus 3 amperes. All right, so we're summing up the currents entering the node, minus 3 amperes, plus I1 equals zero. And then if we rearrange this equation, we'll see that I1 must equal, we have 10 plus 5, 15, minus 3, that's a positive 12, to the other side, negative 12, and of course the units are going to be amperes. So the current that we were asked to find, I1, we were said what is I1, and the value of I1 is simply going to be negative 12 coulombs per second. Yes, indeed the current is actually, the charges are actually flowing in this direction, but we were asked to find the value of I1, and I1 is the current flowing to the left, that is negative 12 amperes. So here we have Kirchhoff's current law. This is the kind of law you need to learn how to, dis to, to write these equations and compute these currents without thinking about it. This should be very uh, reflexive or instinctive to you as you go forward because when we get to more complicated problems uh, in our later studies, the, re the expressions that describe these currents are not going to be such simple things as 5 and 10 and 3 or minus 3. They're going to become much more complicated expressions. So you need to learn how to apply KCL without questioning yourself. So work several of these example problems and make this work just become second nature.